I'm afraid that we are forgetting at the moment one very simple truth. If you are getting out of money, you can declare either bankruptcy or borrow money from a bank. However, if we lost one single species, there is no, at least our uh, current uh, knowledge, any planet from which we can borrow that species. Therefore, biodiversity protection is rather important for our green and economic growth. Biodiversity conservation is in some ways emotional issue for me personally because once you get to know the beauty and the value of the nature you just can't not care about conserving it. Being a scientist and conservationist I'm also aware of the ways biodiversity actually lets us survive. Biodiversity, that's a concept which is, describes uh, diversity of species, of habitats, which describes also the relations between all these features. And the, the more diverse is biological system, the, the more stable it is. The term of green infrastructure is a quite recent term coming from different parts, but now it has been taken by the European Union as the, the aim of the policy for the, for the next year. And this means that all the open areas, not only protected areas, not only nice, beautiful areas, but all the open areas must be taken into account in terms of being planned and managed to deliver the highest system services they can deliver. Right now the European Union in uh, its, uh, its strategy for 2020 for preserving, conserving biodiversity, uh, there are several targets and action referring to green infrastructure. So from mapping to system services, defining where it's the green infrastructure, what's the role in each in its region of, of Europe, and then with recommendations uh, for how to plan, manage and restore ecosystems to, to increase these this ecosystem services. So each local, each region, each uh, state member must take these recommendations into account and apply to create and to manage uh, properly this, this green infrastructure. The main objective of the Birds and Habitats Directive, that's establishment of a system of uh, EU-wide protected areas network, Natura 2000, that is the largest terrestrial uh, network of the protected areas in the world. It covers more than 20% of the EU territory, and that is actually really big achievement. The environmental standards in the EU are very high to protect our people. The Birds and Habitats Directive, that's, uh, these are the piece of legislation which concerns the, uh, the most uh, knowable part of that uh, biodiversity. If altogether there are billions of species, uh, the Birds and Habitats Directive is concerned only a minor part of that, for which we know that either because of their uh, ecological feature uh, or because they are indicators of bigger processes that uh, by protecting these particular features we can protect and, and, and preserve bigger part of biodiversity. My, my interest in birds started with interest uh, in, in nature and I think that uh, it's not something I gained it's something I didn't lose and birds it's just because I got binoculars and started focusing my interest on birds but I was 10 years old. This is a military training area Adaji, but it's also a Natur 2000 site and uh, I work here in 
my spare time. My, my main job is CEO of Latvian Ornithological Society, but uh, I have close ties with uh, a bird, especially protected bird species, hoopoe, uh, which uh, lives here, and that's why I visit this site once in a while since 2006. I would like uh, to mention European roller, for example, uh, the species that's critically endangered in Latvia, uh, but uh, we have managed to sustain a more or less stable population for the last years. It's a small population, but still it's stable and slightly expanding. Uh, and the core of the population is in Natura 2000 site Garkalm Smeži. And due to uh, management activities, mainly putting up next nest boxes, it has moved also to, to this Natura 2000 area, uh, Adaji. So it has expanded slightly, and, and now it's the uh, northernmost uh, breeding area of European roller in Europe. We can uh, compare the, the biological diversity as a foundation of our life. And the more stable is foundation, the more stable is our life. That's why it is important to keep uh, that uh, foundation very stable and, and, and secure and diverse. Because we are not aware of all relations between different features of that uh, foundation. And uh, we don't know how disappearance of one particular feature will influence all this system. Important people to know that ecosystems, in addition to have beautiful forest or important species, uh, also give very important benefits that are necessary for, for human life and for human well-being. Sāku, es ļoti savaicīgi biju 1988. gads, kad sāku pirmās cirsmas zāģēt jaunajiem zemniekiem. Un pēc tam es sāku sadarboties ar mešēnicību nopietnāku, sāku pirkt mežu īpašums. Un šobrīd es sapircis nepilns tūkstotas hektārs. Agrā vēl, ja mēs strādājam tikai ar kārcetiem, tad izveidājās tāds mešs, kas ir kā pakāpiņiem. Tātad viens pavisam mas, tad nākošais pakāpiņas ir daudz lielāks. Ja? un tad pa visu lielas trīs, četras paņēmienos. Ilgspēja mešēmniecība ir meža apsaimniekošana, kur vienlīdz prioritāri tiek apvienotas ekonomiskās vajadzības ar vides un sociālajiem labumiem. Mešēmniecībai ir jābūt maksimāli elastīgākai, pieņemot, tas arī palīdzēs arī dažādām sugām, un sugām pielāgoties apstākļiem, gan arī pašam meža īpašniekam ļaus labāk varbūt nu, ātrāk reaģēt uz kaut kādām pārmaiņām. Nocirst mežu jau paspēt vienmēr var, tā ir no problēma. Mežstrāde tad, kad nebojāt zemsaļu, ja, vai bojāt maksimāli maz. Protams, atstāt arī kādu koku jau kā ekoloģiskajā nākotnē, kurš šobrīd vēl nav ekoloģiskajās koki, koki, bet kur es pieņemu, ka viņš varētu būt, ja, tad, tad tas varētu būt kāda apsa vai pārauga segli vai vērsts kāds vecāks, jau, ja, kuram šobrīd ir maza ekonomiskā vērtība. Mēs uh, saglabājam dabas daudzveidību vai dažādus elementus, uh, bioloģiski vecus kokus, uh, mirušu koksni. Atšķirīgi strādājam mežmalā, puru malā, ūdens malā. Līdz ar to daži dažādi uh, var teikt šīs prasības, kā strādāt vidē draudzīgi mežā. Šeit stāv brīžtīgs koks. Kāda tur jau zemes sakala, vai dzilna sakala, sakala štaurums. <coughs> Bet man viņš kā mešsēmniekam nu, ekonomiskā vērtība viņam nav nulle. Tas drīzāk cieši zaudējums, es viņu būtu mazāģējis. Dzirdējāt tikko čīnu putniņu, ja? <coughs> tā tad... Ja es strādāju šādiem paņēmieniem, tad tā bilīdzskā daudzveidība droši vien, ka paveikt mežā, ja ne mazāk, tad drīzāk vairāk.
Allora io sono Farinelli per Carlo, adesso attualmente faccio il capovallo, è responsabile de, de, del settore de, della pesca. Ho cominciato 34 anni fa, quindi quando ero ragazzino, 18 anni, eh, addirittura 14 anni perché fa, ho fatto delle campagne d'avventizio, quindi ho cominciato proprio 14 anni a fare questo, questo lavoro, poi sono diventato fisso a 18 anni. Quando sono entrato io eravamo in 154 a lavorare, allora, allora si chiamava Azienda Valli Comunali, Adesso siamo sotto al parco Regione Emilia Romagna e siamo circa una quarantina di persone, 40 dipendenti. Intanto qui siamo a Stazione Foce, qui sono le valli di Romagna, che siamo all'interno del parco del Delta del Po, questo qui si chiama Stazione Foce. Questa struttura qua è il lavoriero che fino agli anni 50 erano fatti in canna e adesso sono fatti in cemento con griglie d'alluminio, si è cambiato il materiale ma il sistema è sempre quello. Noi tutti gli anni, il primo buio di luna di ottobre, tiriamo sulle chiuse e facciamo entrare acqua in valle. L'anguilla sentendo l'acqua del mare, quella adulta, quella che ha la schiena argentata e pancia bianca, vorrebbe andare al mare dei sargassi a riprodursi. Questo qui non è altro che un labirinto per pescare le anguille. Prima si pescavano molte anguille, adesso l'anguilla è calata circa il 90%, però ci pescano altri pesci, perché prima c'erano tante anguille e c'erano pochi sardoncini e gamberetti. Adesso ci pescano poche anguille e peschiamo più gamberetti e sardoncini, che erano quelli che venivano mangiate eh, dalle anguille. Quindi c'è questa biodiversità. È cambiato il clima. Prima non avevamo i fenicotteri, adesso è da, da, da 15 anni che abbiamo i fenicotteri. Prima non, non avevamo i, i fenicotteri. Tanto per farti un esempio, quando io ho cominciato a fare questo lavoro qua, stavo delle giornate, dei mesi senza vedere una persona. Adesso, tanto per farti un esempio, questo, questo giro c'è un giro turistico che porta circa 20.000 paganti, quindi vuol dire che ce ne sono 50.000 persone che, che, che fanno questo, che girano intorno a, alla valle. Diciamo che, eh, come, come, come dico sempre io, quando mi chiedono, lei che lavoro fa? Io lavoro nel mondo di qua, perché le cose che vedi qua le vedi soltanto nei documentari più belli che, che ci siano. The most uh significant challenges are caused by those invasive plant species which uh, covers the natural habitats. There are several uh, invasive species which uh, covers the grassland area, provide uh, shadows, and in this manner they create a different type of microclimate which is really harmful for the local plant communities. Hungary spent a large amount of uh, financing resources on uh, restoring habitats like wetlands. And in these uh, terms, the fighting against the invasive species and proper management played a significant role. We established or reconstructed uh, tens of thousands of hectares in wetland areas and grassland. And one of the main factors of, of these uh, actions was fighting against the invasive plant species. In nature conservation terms, uh, the invasive species uh, uh, endangers the, the local natural ecosystems with, with their uh, several types of impacts. There are also invasive species which cause uh, significant impacts to human health even. And there are also uh, ones which has uh, really strong economic effects. These uh, species need intensive management from terms of nature conservation. Once they have to eliminate from the area, uh, mainly with, with grazing, uh, with uh, local breeds. In terms of human health, just like the ragweed, which is one of the most important invasive species causing atomatic symptoms to approximately 20% of the Hungarian population. So it's a, a, a crucial point of the uh, human health. What the, the government institutions can do, we can set the framework for protecting the biological diversity.
be it uh, the legal framework uh, or the institutional framework or securing some funding, supporting and explaining and raising awareness of the people. That is the framework where the government institutions can work. In the sphere I'm working in, it's uh, usually the NGOs providing the data, uh, providing the expertise on necessary instruments for nature conservation. And the help we get from European Commission is that they are understanding and they see our priorities in the context of overall priorities for, for development. But uh, it's, I guess it's us who are uh, setting the, the pace in nature conservation. The role of individuals is very important. Uh, firstly, because uh, you are, a, you, are, you are a political individual, so you, you, you can really influence decision makers with your individual actions. But in addition to this, your way of uh, or performing your, your life in, in terms of what you eat, uh, use of water, uh, waste production, day-to-day -day life is really very important in terms of what's your impact, positive or negative, to this green infrastructure and ecosystem services. The Green Infranet project that we are involved is an example from different regions of Europe of concrete actions that are already being done, uh, examples of protection, of restoration, of, of changing of management that are really improving ecosystem services and strengthening this green infrastructure. One of the, the most powerful transfers is the transferring from Barcelona to, to REC in Hungary. Our GIS scheme for land analysis are planning. We, we held two meetings already. We are now in the third meeting of the, of the transfer. And uh, what we are trying is to explain our approach uh, for including natural databases, natural information about natural values into spatial planning. We have around 12 years experience in the region of Barcelona and, and REC is taking the, the main ideas, the, the main approaches and uh, trying to develop in Hungary, taking their own databases about natural values and using for spatial planning. We found the, a common language with the Barcelona colleagues and then we found a, a more or less common set of expert groups. So it was easy to, to have a dialogue with, with the, the colleagues from the Barcelona. And uh, this was the more important uh, factor of our success. And the other is that we face with the sim similar problems. We both try to protect the open areas, the areas with uh, significant natural values. We in the REC do consider that there is no proper biodiversity protection without cross-sectorial approach. Therefore, we are trying to mobilize representatives and stakeholders from various sectors. Pasoduomo is a, an association born like a festival three years ago for valorization of uh, the landscape of Balconca. It takes part in the first weekend of uh, September. Uh, there are uh, nine um, ta uh, towns that uh, is uh, the principal territory where we work and uh, where we, we do shows uh, and performance exposition. The idea of the Apasu Duomo festival, uh, it was a very good uh, approach to do something useful to, to keep the nature, to keep your tradition, and the other uh, very good practices of spatial planning of the territory. It was very important also. These kind of activities will be tr are almost transferred. Last year, the same uh, month of September, we came uh, to Emilia Romagna because we wanted to implement their, on a small scale of course, their uh, project. The people of ICM are going to benefit a lot. 
this is very important cooperation because nature doesn't stop in my country, on my border or in your border. The nature is for everyone, for whole Europe and whole world. And this is why without international cooperation, it's not possible to have this nature clean and for the next generations. The transfer of good practices between partners will ensure the sustainability of the results achieved. In addition, the establishment of the European Network for Green Infrastructure Knowledge and Experience will enable stakeholders across Europe to share their project achievements and continue cooperation after the end of the Green Infranet project. The last output will have the most far-reaching impact if it is accompanied by continuing communication with existing stakeholders and the expansion of new and valuable contacts in the future. The advice would be to work together even if it's sometimes difficult difficult to understand each other, uh, but this is the key point of, of the following process. Biodiversity protection is not just expenditure, it's not just the cost. That's the best way how we can do the savings, savings for our bright future.